Morning everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Well, we've got a slightly different project today. Uh, we've got this little 1946 two and a half horsepower, or sorry, two horsepower Cooper's TB stationary engine. <clears throat> now this engine was originally used to drive a two stand shearing plant on a station in the north of Western Australia. Um, I have had it running before but that was about 10 years ago and it's been sitting in the shed ever since. I want this for another fun project in a couple of weeks time so I just thought we would drag it out of the shed and see if we can get it to run. Now there's a couple of interesting things about these engines. This is a petrol engine. Um, so we have the fuel tank down here underneath the engine and this is the fuel line. The carburetor is here and it sucks the petrol straight out of the petrol tank up into the carburetor and into the engine. So there's no float or anything like that on a modern engine. There is not even a throttle on here. This particular engine is what is called a hit and miss engine. So when it is, uh, when it is running, it is running flat out, full throttle all the time. The way it controls its speed is that there is a, a little uh, thing here. So this is connected to the governor. Um, and when it is running at the correct speed, this is the push rod for the exhaust valve up here on the cylinder head. So when it slows down, uh, this moves out to the position it's in now and uh, allows the push rod to come back down so that the valve closes, you get compression and it fires. Now, when it's running fast enough or too fast, this moves in and it catches the push rod uh, on that little little lip there and holds the exhaust valve open um, and this allows the engine to just coast along with no compression and as it slows down it'll uh, allow the valve to close again and it will fire I don't want to turn it at the moment because the valves are a bit sticky on here um, and I haven't put any oil in the cylinder yet it's been sitting for a very long time the other thing with this is it has a rather unusual magneto on it. The magneto sits on here. Uh, it's off at the moment because the trouble I've always had with this, or the one time I had this engine running, is it had a very weak spark on it and I could not crank start it. I needed to put an electric motor on it to start it. So this is the magneto here. It's a Wicko trip magneto. And instead of having something that turns, it's, it pulls on a cam under here, it pulls this piece up and down uh, in the magneto. There's a set of points just in behind here. Uh, there's two big coils in here. And as it moves this in and out, it creates the spark. But it wasn't a very strong spark. So I took it off and sent it down to the auto electrician about five years ago. Um, and I haven't had a chance to put it back on yet. So I'm going to go through this. Uh, I'm going to put the magneto back on. I'm going to oil up the valves and uh, the rocker and a few other bits. I've got to check the oil in the sump. I'll put a little bit of oil in the um, cylinder so we can turn it over nicely and we'll come back. Just before we do that, the way of checking the oil on this is also rather unusual. This is your drain bung here. This little tap here is your level tap. So you turn it on and you should get a little bit of oil trickling out of there. This is low on oil, I'm going to have to put some more in. Fill it up till some runs out, turn the tap off. Um, and this is your filler for the petrol tank. Now I'll be really surprised if the petrol tank still holds petrol because it was paper thin last time I had this running. Uh, but we'll see how we go with it. 
Now that we've got the magneto on and everything, if I wind it over slowly, you can see how the trip mechanism works. <clears throat> so what happens is as we come up to compression, this uh, starts pushing on here and because it's sprung loaded here, when it gets to a certain point, it will make the pull this down. When we go to the right point, it slips off the bottom here and that snaps closed. Now it's when this snaps closed, that is when we get the spark. We can change the timing for starting by moving this little lever here. Um, and uh, so it's a fairly simple system uh, that is far more complicated than on a lot of other engines. Anyway, we'll put some fuel in it now and uh, see if it's going to go. Okay, because we don't actually have a float chamber or anything in the carburetor, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of fuel down the spark plug hole. Uh, that'll just get help it draw the fuel up when it's first starting. Otherwise, it can be a fair bit of cranking uh, in order to suck the fuel far enough in. And let's see if it'll go. Okay, so it has, it should have everything it needs to start. It has spark, it has fuel. I got it to fire once or twice and that's all I've managed to do, hand cranking it. So now we're going to resort to the electric starter motor. I've got a 240 volt motor there, belt driven to the pulley. I've got a foot switch down there for it. We'll see if we can get it going when we spin it a little bit faster. Well, after a bit of fiddling, we finally got it running properly. And it doesn't sound too bad, considering how long it is since it last ran, and how long since it was last actually used for anything. When we come round this side, uh, we can see the way the hit and miss governor works, and the way it's holding the push rod open. Here we can see how the magneto uh, is snapped open and closed to uh, create the spark. Here we can see the exhaust valve being held open and when it closes you can see the intake valve being sucked open on the intake stroke as well.
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. It's been fun getting this engine running again. Uh, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.